happy to be back today. Um, if this is your first time coming to my channel, hello, welcome. Um, this channel is dedicated to Jesus and it's dedicated to um, empowering, pushing, and teaching those who are in the body of Christ. And so, um, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. I hope that you find something on here that encourages you and um, that you subscribe for more videos. So today's video was a requested video from um, one of my subscribers. Today I'm going to be giving you five tips for how to increase your intimacy with God. This was something that one of my subscribers really felt like he could benefit from and so I'm sure that a lot of you can benefit from this as well and so we'll get right into it. Tip number one, wake up earlier. I have been doing this since the Holy Spirit has pressed it upon me to start waking up earlier and implementing more time with him intentionally. And so um, the time that he gave me was 5 a.m. Now, if you know me, you, you know that I love sleep, okay? I love sleep, I love rest. And so when he told me to start waking up at five, at first I, I felt like I was not capable. I felt like it wasn't gonna happen. I felt like I would sleep through my alarm or whatever, but the Holy Spirit has grace for you and he will help you to make sure that you are up on time when he tells you to. And so waking up at 5 a.m., I have been able to eliminate distractions. So it's not about rushing to get ready for work or school. It's not about rushing to look at what's on my phone or respond to emails or text or call people. It's not about that. It's not about that at that time. Because it's so early in the morning, it becomes the best time for you to be intimate with God. And so what I will do is either journal at this time, I will pray at this time, I will play worship music at this time. I'll still be wrapped up in my robe or have my cover on or something like that, but I do make sure that I get out of my bed. That process of you getting out of your bed eliminates the desire to fall back asleep or to not be fully coherent or awake when God is trying to speak to you. And so what I will do is leave my bed, I'll go to my living room and I have this little area where God and I meet, that's our designated area, which is another little tip that you can take from this as well, is just to create a space where you and God meet, where you enter that space. It's just this little corner of my couch and that's where God and I are able to rest and meet. So that's the first tip is waking up earlier and meeting him in the morning. Tip number two, create a routine. Creating a routine with the Holy Spirit is how you're able to really increase your intimacy with him. When you are able to implement routine with him throughout your day, it's easier not to have to feel like you are pushing him off or not having enough time for him. And so implementing a routine could be as simple as I wake up early in the morning and I spend time with him. At three o'clock every day, I pray or on my lunch break every day, I go into worship where I have a journal time with him. Or right before I go to sleep, I make sure that I watch a sermon or I read the book that he's been pressing upon me to read. Whatever it may be, implementing a routine that you are able to follow real, will increase your intimacy and just allowing you to be consistent and dedicated to staying on that routine with God. Tip number three, and this is probably my favorite tip because it's worked wonders in my life, is fasting. So a lot of times people will approach fasting with the mentality of expectation for God or expecting to fast for something. But fasting doesn't have to be always an expectation. Fasting is really meant to decrease your flesh and to increase your spirit. When you are in this place of suppressing your flesh and what it desires, you have no choice but to be increased in the spirit. And so to build that intimacy with God, fasting is a great, great way to silence your flesh, silence your carnal mind, silence the desires of your heart, and really be able to hear God clearly for what he's calling you to. At the end of this month, I will be finishing up my Daniel's fast, which has just been so incredible when it comes to building more intimacy and aligning with my routine with God. And so during this time, I have been waking up earlier. I have been journaling more. I have been more keen and more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And he's been teaching me about more things. I've gone through deliverance in this time. There's a lot that has been happening simply because I have decided to fast and that means to put off the desires of my flesh and to take on the nature of Christ, the 
desires of Christ and to really just focus in on him. And so fasting doesn't always have to be that you're not eating or that you're not drinking or that you're abstaining from some sort of food. Fasting can be that you are not on social media or that you limit your social media time. Fasting can be that you are in isolation for a certain time, that you're not speaking to, um, um, that you're not hanging out or going out as often. Fasting can be simply just excluding the things that you know your flesh desires. Like if you know that you watch a TV show a lot and just telling your flesh, no, you can't watch that TV show because in that time, I'm going to dedicate that time to God. And so God will honor that and he will teach you more about himself and you will build intimacy with him by giving him a dedicated time when you fast. Tip number four is praying. Praying is probably the easiest way to really build intimacy with God because it does not have to be in a specific time, in a specific day, at a specific hour. It doesn't have to be very specific. It can be a very generalized prayer. You don't have to go all into depth about every little thing, but you can simply just start inviting the Holy Spirit into your day by praying. When I first started out praying, I didn't have all of this elaborate speech and calling out things. God is not requiring of you to have this elaborate speech or this elaborate plan about how you're going to pray. But what he desires from you is intimacy of your heart in truth. And so when you come to him with a heart and a desire to seek him, a heart and a desire to hear from him, your prayers are going to reach him anyway, especially when it's coupled with righteous living, because the Bible says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So whatever it is that you're wanting to talk to God about, instead of calling a friend up on the phone or instead of venting about it or writing about it in your diary, you can literally speak out to your father and he will speak back to you. And so that's also one way that you're able to start hearing what his voice sounds like and being able to decipher your voice from his voice. A lot of people, who are building their prayer life often have that question. How do I know when it's the Holy Spirit and how do I know when it's me? If you continue to pray, you will begin to understand how God sounds and what he speaks like. Prayer is a two-way street. So it's a communication. It's not just you speaking to God, but he speaks back. So make sure that when you pray, you're not just rambling, rambling, rambling to the point where you've released everything off your chest, but you're not allowing God to release back into you when he is speaking to you. And so prayer is a two-way street. You want to make sure that you are praying to him and then you want to make sure that you are allowing him to speak back to you. And our fifth tip is reading the word of God, reading the word of God. So I can't stress how important this is enough because you have to understand that the word of God is living. The word of God is not just a book written. It is a true and living word of God. And so those words have power. They have power to change your mindset. You are able to be renewed in your mind by the word of God. And so in those times where you fast or in those times when you wake up in the morning or in those times where you're really wanting to seek God and you've set a time aside, you should always include reading the word of God. Whether it's a scripture or a chapter or a couple of verses that the Lord may lead you to, allow those things to really resonate with you, really reflect on the scriptures that he's given you and allow them to be meditated on in your heart. Sometimes God will lead you to scriptures that will really resonate in your life later on, or you may see how that scripture is going to help you through later on down the week or whatever it may be. Maybe meditating on that scripture is going to give you new perspective about something you've been praying on. And so God speaks through his word. You can learn his character in his word. You understand his promises to you in your in his word. You understand your identity and who you are in him through his word. And so it's so drastically important that you are implementing the word of God. One way to really study the Bible that's a really easy way is just to get involved with Bible plans. There are Bible plans on the YouVersion Bible app, which is completely free to everyone. And there are different uh, versions of the Bible to read. Just in case you're like me and King James Version can sometimes be confusing, the NLT version is a really great way to start off. Or the Message Bible, MSG. Those are really good ways to start off and really understand the Word of God without all of those yay, thou's that may kind of get you tripped up. So I hope this video helped you. Those are the five tips on how to increase your intimacy with God. Let's pray before we go. 
Lord, I thank you for your people. I thank you for those who are going to be drawn to this video. I thank you for those who are going to click on this video, God, and hear something that they may not have heard in the past. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are going to make yourself known and manifest in their lives simply because they desire it, God. There's no good gift that you would keep um, away from us. There's nothing that you would keep us from achieving, Lord God, if it's in your will. And so I thank you, Lord God, that it's not hard to seek you. It's not hard to come into your presence. It's not hard to build intimacy with you, Lord God. So you will remove every barrier of the mind. You will remove every barrier of um, our hearts. You will remove every wicked desire and everything that tries to draw our attention or distract us away from seeking you, Father God. Your word says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of your righteousness and everything will be added unto us, God. And so we thank you that we can uh, proclaim that. I thank you that we can stay in that space, Lord God, and understand that you will always come through on your promises. And so we abide in you, we stay in you, Lord God, and we thank you that these tips will help us to move forward in increasing our intimacy with you and your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. See you in the next video.